Hello, it's Scary Fox here, and tonight we are going to talk about heading toward understanding some math concepts. And the way we're going to talk about that is we're going to start talking about a uh, an automobile. And eventually we're going to talk about creating a cruise control for this automobile. And in doing so, we're going to be talking about some math concepts. And uh, so I've kind of told you what I'm going to tell you. So I guess now it's time to tell you what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> So, we'll go into uh, this first picture right here. And uh, what we're going to have is eventually a cruise control. And the way a cruise control works with us in the driver's seat, so we're the actual cruise control, is if you think about when you're driving, you have the speed limit. And that's basically your reference. Now, your reference, your, your personal reference might be five miles over or five mile an hour less than or ten mile an hour over or there ain't no cops around no cars around let's see how fast this thing will go whatever you've got a speed speed reference in your head okay you're looking at the speedometer and that's reading back from what the actual speed is you subtract those two and you get an error and that error, if you're doing something besides seeing how fast the car will go, tells you whether or not you need to depress the gas pedal a little bit more or a little bit less. And then uh, what you're controlling is your automobile, the car. So that's basically what a feedback loop is. Actually, I call this thing device. Some books call that the plant. Then you have your controller. You do this calculation, which I've got the plus coming in and the minus feedback. And uh, that produces the error. And then you get your output after you go through both the controller and the device. So that is a basic feedback loop right there. And what we're going to do is the very first step is we're going to have to create a car. We're going to have to create a model for the car. So that is going to be our very first step and what I'm going to do in this very first video. Okay, to create that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet is uh, a program. And it's part of an office program. Now you can get the spreadsheet, most Windows systems or very many Windows systems come with Excel which is part of Windows Office and then also part of Windows Office is that you have a a program to uh, do word processing and a program to do uh, really fancy displays called PowerPoint and then there's one that's called uh, Often there's one that can do drawing, which is Visio. Sometimes that's an extra. Well, anyhow, if you don't have that available, there is available a uh, free software. And, of course, you know me. With uh, If you followed me very much, you know how I like, like the open office or the open programming. And... Uh, that's what this is. It's open source, free program, and you can download it. And it does the same thing that Windows Office will do. Uh, probably doesn't do it exactly the same, but it does it close enough. And it will even write documents that Windows can upload. So, uh, to me, it's a very, very nice program. And the price is definitely right. So consider LibreOffice. I'll put a link here. When you go to the main page, you go to this web, main website. When you go to their main website, they've got a button here that says Download. It automatically looks as if it knows what your system is. Because it knows what my system is. And uh, 
but if it doesn't you can do this change system and you can download it into Windows Mac or Linux and that's the big three right there so it should have you covered you should be able to download it and install it alright <clears throat> that's basically the software that we're going to be running and then I have a file right here that I have written in that. I'm pulling it up right now. You see, I'm still running LibreOffice 3. I haven't upgraded to LibreOffice 4. Okay, what I have here is I created a model. And what we're going to do is sample what's going on with this model once each tenth of a second. So we start out with minus 0.5 seconds, and once we get to zero, we're going to take our gas pedal, which is what the second column represents, depress it all the way to the floor, and see how fast this car will go. Okay, the calculations for this. The calculation for here is nothing. That's just basically it at zeros when I turn it on and I turn it on full speed so it's just I punch in the number 100 when I do the calculation for acceleration Newton told us that force equals mass times acceleration so I take force and divide it by the mass and then I end up with the acceleration so I had to give the car a mass and I gave the car a mass of 10 gave the car a force of 100. 100 watt? 100 newtons? 100 foot pound, or feet? Pounds, I'm sorry. 100 pounds? Uh, 100,000 pounds? I don't know. I just said a 100. It represents the position of the uh, accelerometer, or sorry, of the gas pedal. And the 10 represents the mass, and 10 just worked out to be a nice nice number so we didn't worry about finding actual real units the 100 also will end up becoming once we get into speed will become 100 miles per hour okay after I do that then I calculate the acceleration which is force divided by mass and then uh, from that then I have to calculate the speed that the car is going Speed is a little bit trickier. Speed, I take what the acceleration is on this sampling period and what the acceleration was in the previous sampling period. And I take that and divide by, add the two together and divide by two. So I've got the average acceleration for the time period. And then I have to uh, divide that by 0.1 seconds because that's what the uh, time period was that it, it accelerated in. <clears throat> so, or I multiply that times 0.1 and then I divide it by 2. So that's why I got this multiply by 0.05 up here. Okay, that gives us the speed that it increased during that time period. We add that also to the previous speed in the previous time period. And then that gives us kind of a running total, which gives us the actual speed. And so you can see that up there when you, uh, when you look at this. Okay. <clears throat> also, this spreadsheet, I'm going to have two references in the, uh, the video notes. One of them will be the reference to the same stuff that I'm talking in the video. It was on my blog post. It was called uh, Why Do Cars Reach Maximum Speed? And the second thing is that I will uh, have a link so that you can download this spreadsheet if you want to look at it closer and play with it. Okay, so that's what we've got at this point. So we look at the graph and let's see what we get. Here at right at zero, we tromp the uh, gas pedal, pedal to the metal full speed ahead and what happens the car just keeps right on accelerating and we're getting up to about 800 mile an hour here after 80 seconds which is kind of unrealistic 
The reason why is the car never does have it, never does meet any resistance. We're in a frictionless world, no air resistance, no nothing at the moment. So back to the calculations. <clears throat> so if I change this little number up here, and the yellow means these are numbers that I can change, by the way. They're kind of tuning constants. What I have there is that the wind resistance with this, what I call aerodynamic coefficient of 1, the wind resistance will be exactly the same as what the speed is. Okay. So our very first time we had a speed of a half a mile an hour, our wind resistance is 0.5. We subtract that from uh, the 100 to get what our force is, which is what we're doing up here. We're subtracting it from the, uh, the force that we're putting from the gas pedal. And that gives us what our uh, force is. So we then divide that by the mass, and that calculates how much speed we're going to increase. So these numbers start getting, uh, have a lot of decimal points behind them. If we look at our graph of what that does, all of a sudden, it looks more like what a real car is. It accelerates pretty fast when you're at slow speeds, but then as you uh, get closer and closer to where the car is starting to peak out, it eventually starts uh, increasing speed very, very slow. And that is, if you followed our, might have been following my blog, that's exactly the same thing as what happens when a capacitor charges. Uh, it increases in voltage really fast, and then it starts slowing down on how it, how it increases. It's exactly the same equation. So that is our car model right there. And that shows uh, what's going to happen. Our car is going to peak out at 100 mile an hour. And uh, this particular car, it took it about... 50 some seconds to get up there at 100 mile an hour and 0 to 60 they're always talking about that we got about 12 seconds which is not extremely fast but that's not extremely slow uh, there's a lot that's made up on this model we're not having to shift gears or it's not having to shift gears automatically if it was an automatic transmission but in general the model it's fairly close to what a car actually does. So that's our model. That's the end of this first video. And in the second video, we will go back to that control loop. I think I've already closed that. We will go back to that control loop and start trying to uh, increase the, maintain the speed by using a cruise control. Appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. There is a whole lot more to come. Thank you. This is Gary Fox.